Hey there, I'm back over at my parents' house, helping my dad work on his 95 GL1500 Honda Goldwing trike. And today we're gonna work on replacing the radiators. So here's the parts we're using. He's ordered new hoses for the radiator, the lower radiator hose, some new radiators. He found those on eBay and then coolant bushings, all that stuff he found from Ziegler Motorsports, all Honda OEM products. Okay, so first step, we're gonna remove the front fairing and we're gonna push in the center of that front cover and then pull at the tabs at, it up, at its upper corners. Okay. So it's free of the grommets. There's one in each corner, and then you're going to disengage the lower tabs from the undercover. And then we're going to go ahead and remove the lower screw on each side of the undercover and the upper two screws. I'm going to take this lower screw out, and then there's this other lower screw here. Okay, and it just pulls down and off. like that. All right, next step is to take off this grill. It's a couple eight millimeter. So next, we're gonna go ahead and remove the lower fairing covers. And first step, we're gonna need to remove the wraps around the rear and lower edges. I'm gonna do that by pulling the trim cover off the screw at the lower rear. Next we go ahead and take off this cover at the rear of the reflector. It's going to expose a screw there. Take that cover off and unhook the driving light if necessary. Alright, and then you go ahead and take off that front cover. Expose those additional screws there. Same thing on this side, taking off that lower screw and cover if you had one on there. Go ahead and pop that cover off if it had one. And then again, those two screws. Okay, we'll go ahead and pop off the center console here. There's just little rubber grommets you're slipping this plastic out of, but you gotta be careful because the plastic can be brittle. These rubber grommets here. Just sits there, and then the next step, we're gonna take off these plastic pieces. Cover us up the radiator cap. Again on this other side. Pull that cover off of there. Kind of pops out in the bottom and slides off in the top. Let's go back up all the way. Pop those out of there. There we go. There we go. Let's 
let's take a quick peek at these so you can see. So there's multiple tabs along this edge here. So you got to kind of pull out to the left, pop it out, and then that slides into the top. So in the service manual, it shows removal and installation of the radiators. Um, but this is quite open in the pictures. However, when you compare it to the bike, I'm guessing they have all the upper fairing off because it is not as open, right? There is not a lot of room to work with down here. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and leave this upper fairing on and we're going to work at taking off these fans on each side and seeing if that'll give us some additional clearance here. Take off that electrical connection plug. Okay. There's some 10 millimeter bolts up there. There's another one up in that top corner up there. Seems to be easier to get to with a, a little wrench, 10 millimeter ratchet wrench. So it was rubbing on the was intake. Just... All right, we were able to get this fan out, so it kind of sat in there like this, but back in there a few more, a few more inches for sure. At the plug here, had a screw up at the top, one off to the left there. But then another thing I just noticed is it had this little nub right there that fit inside this grommet right there. See if you can see that. And so we had to work it out of there. Then it was also a tight fit off that intake there. And then peeking around in there, you can see some leakage and some corrosion. So it's a good idea that we're uh, taking care of this now. All right, we'll do this with the other side. I'm gonna take the plug out. And we got the two 10 millimeter at the top. you from getting that on there. All right, so we'll work on getting that screw out of there. These little tabs that hold these uh, wire clips in the top to pop out of there. Once you get those upper clips off of those, that upper wire clips, and you can out of there. And there's a grommet holding it in too. Hey, and by the way, you keep hearing the furnace kind of kick on and off. We try to film in between that, but we are at minus eight degrees. I'll pop outside here, give you a little sneak peek. Minus eight right there. But it is an absolute gorgeous day. Beautiful. step is to go ahead and drain the antifreeze, the coolant from the system. Right down here is a drain bolt for the water pump. Okay. Oh, I gotta take the radiator cap off. Yep. Alright. Now the radiator cap's off and all 
All right, next step will be to take off the lower radiator hose. It attaches to both radiators and then down there to the bottom, down by that water pump. And pull that hose off. All right. Take off this left one. Undo this hose clamp for the upper hose on the right radiator. All right, then we'll go ahead and take this bolt off the radiator. There's a hose that goes between the two radiators and we're actually replacing that hose so we're just going to go ahead and cut it. There we go. There we go. Just like that. So that is loose from there except... Oh I see. It slides out. There's a grommet right here. Should slide through. Just pull on. Next step is to take this plug off. I believe this is water temperature sensor. Yep. Okay. And then there's a ground wire right there on the bottom. is taking the hose clamp off the left radiator Should be able to pull that off that grommet there. And then you should be able to get that seal out. portion of the upper hose. Okay, it's off. So next we're going to take off this overflow hose.
Done. Just like that. Flex it out. There you go. And okay. out she goes. Just like that. Yep, just like that. So here, right there, that manifold. You can see it's been leaking for quite a while. Right. Right in here, it's been running down. Yeah. Because the hose clamp was loose. Been there better. There we go. So the loose hose clamp. And you can see the it's running down there. The bolts here. All the corrosion. The bolts. Okay, so we got some new grommets for the side here. Fit those in. Got a new O-ring for the temperature sensor. Already installed that on there. And then we got these two grommets here. These are the bases that slide into the brackets on the bottom. Those are new. And then we gotta put on the old radiators. We can see that there's these kind of pads, these bumpers. So we need to adhere those onto the new ones. So that. Clean it with some alcohol there. Okay. Okay. So we pulled off the temperature gauge ground wire and had to put a new end on it, a little bit larger one, because in the new radiator, this is where it screws into, we had to find a larger screw and the larger screw needed a larger electrical component. So, Okay, we are starting to put these hoses back together. We got to wind this upper one back around everything like that. And then we got to find where that goes up through there. Yeah, I think you're up there. There we go. Okay. Yep, that is up there. Right. Now we just need to get the filler hose, the clamp. Okay, let me see it. Okay. Okay, we got the hose clamp on the main here. Now we're just trying to put it on this overflow. our attention down lower. Yep. Okay, apply that. Okay. Once you get that. In. Okay. Okay. Great. One thing I noticed on another video for an aftermarket is these grommets, when they bolt these radiators up onto the outside frame, you'll notice this one is a box, a square, right like that. And you'll notice this one has a diagonal, so it's more of a triangular shape. And what that is, and I think we're gonna need to cut it, what that is is, when we go to mount it on this bar here, this shape, 
that is needs to be cut off. It actually is because it hits. Let me see if I can make this more clear. It hits right here on this frame bar. See how it's not it's not a lot to work with there. So we have to cut a little bit of that off there. Hey, by the way, if you like the content, go ahead and like and subscribe. It really helps the channel. Uh, leave a comment, anything. I usually read the comments within a day or so, and I try to respond back to each one. So, thanks. All right, we have prepped the radiator now by cutting the corner. We've also added this small piece that goes between the radiators. And then what he's doing there is just using a little of the antifreeze in the system to kind of add some lubrication to that upper hose there. There you go. Keep going. About a quarter inch away. There you go. I think you're getting it. Yep. I'm gonna say it's there. Let's go ahead and tighten that up. You just gotta get that thing pushed into there. Is it going? Grom it in or no? Yeah, it's in. Alright, we just installed this canister back on and the radiator screw. Okay. Alright, here we are. Second radiator. This one's gonna be a little tricky. We gotta get that upper hose in there and that other smaller upper hose. And we have very little clearance, leverage, room. Okay, good, keep going. And just watch out for that grommet thing right there. Okay. Putting this last screw on, we've been able to get the clamps on there. A little bit of a challenge if, with patience. Got the new grommet down there, new pads along the frame there. There's the new radiators. Go ahead and put that temperature sensor in. Like I mentioned earlier, it came, or we ordered a new O-ring for it. We put just a little bit of Goop on there as well, to hopefully minimize any kind of leaking. Okay. Okay.
Okay, next we're gonna start adding some coolant. Got the hoses all hooked back up again. Okay, we're rolling this thing outside. Gonna let it sit and come up to normal temperature. Check for leaks since we just put all the new antifreeze back in. Okay, now we're just putting the fans back in. They're a little tricky, tight fit. Okay, we got this last fan in. Sorry I didn't film that. It was a little bit difficult. Okay, so to get this in here, we had to take this clip off right here. This right here and that wire. And then we we actually had to like twist and kind of pry back past this frame brace right there to get this back in there. And then we had to work on getting these cable cables, this cable harness plug thing plugged back into the top of the fan housing. And once it's in there, this one had this tricky bolt in the back that was you can't get a socket on it and you can't get a boxed in wrench on it. So you have to go like, you have to basically find it by feel and then go and eighth of a turn at a time with the, with an opened in wrench. So yeah, it was a little bit, a little bit tricky, but it's in there. I'm sorry I didn't film it for you. All right, so we've taken the bike out. We brought it up to temp. We wanted to make sure those fans that we installed uh, turned on and they do right above it goes above the mid mark and as soon as it does the fans turn on and bring it back down install the driving light just twist in there Okay, the tab that goes there. Uh, in there like so. And it screws together at the bottom. This hooks here and here. All right. Okay, now we'll move to the other side. those new radiators that is nice okay next we're gonna put on the grill on here okay I'm on my screw are you on your screw yep it's on the screw over here and then on the back side of the silver tab is like a little pin that needs to line up with that hole there there we go screws in right there at the top next piece we're gonna throw on this bottom Okay, and that pin there. Okay. 
the one center screw that we're putting in. And the thing to keep track of or keep in check is the radiator hose. There's some cutouts in this lower balance area that go around the radiator hose. So you want to keep in mind when you put a new one in. Piece goes back on a couple grommets. Awesome. <laughs>